You know what I always say. New chair, new me. You never say that. I say it. How many you don't you never get new chairs? Welcome to Master Debaters. You're about to debate Master. debate the, the newness of these chairs. Masters debating, masters debate, debaters. Uh it's Eric's turn. We're gonna pick a topic out of the hat and and uh Ramble on it for probably uh, 45 minutes to uh, 60 minutes. And Jesus Christ. What? Another, like, stupid broad art term. What is it? Impressionism. Huh. I don't remember putting that one in the hat. Well, it's, uh, my handwriting. Oh. Well, the hat, the hat knows all. This might be a shorter one, I think. Impressionism as, like, a style is much less, uh... Well, because the last two art videos we did were more... I mean, they were... Terrible. Yes, but also I was going to say that, uh, like, they were, like, broad... They weren't really stylistic type of things. You know, they were more, like... There's some stylistic overlap, but it's more like eras. Whereas Impressionism is more of a, a stylistic... But, you know... Let's uh get good old Google open. What if Google's lying to us? Like you search impressionism and it actually shows you like what they called cubism fucking forty five years ago, but nobody knows because like Google owns this information. That's like my worst nightmare. Honestly, <laughs> definitely up there <laughs> as in. Let's uh, first, let's get a Wikipedia rough definition here. Safe search. Excuse me. All right. Oh, yeah, I remember why your safe search is on. Impressionism is a 19th century art movement characterized by relatively small, thin yet visible brushstrokes, open composition, emphasis on accurate depiction of light and its changing qualities often accentuating the effects of the passage of time. Ordinary subject matter, inclusion of movement as a crucial element of human perception and experience, and unusual visual angles. Impressionism originated with a group of Paris-based artists whose independent exhibitions brought them to prominence during the 1870s and 1880s. The Impressionists faced harsh opposition from the conventional art community in France. The name of the style derives from a title of a Claude Monet work, Impression, Impression Sunrise is the translation, which provokes the critic... I believe it's Soleil Levant. Yes. Well, you'd probably say Impression different too, differently too, right? But Which provoked the critic uh, Louis Leroy to coin the term in a satirical review published in the Parisian newspaper Le Terivari. So, let's, uh, I'm going to put... We'll put the fucking... Uh, the Claude Monet work. Uh, yeah. Somewhere. I forget I think right. right here. Yeah. This is it. This is actually work, works pretty well. The flag. Uh, very nice. I'm a, I'm fond of impressionist uh like stylistically. Right. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's very nice to look at, very interesting to look at. It's what you would often like, think of when you think of, like, art. This is the shit we learn in art class. Well, what's... Impressionism is... Uh, I'm sure Impressionist painting is very hard, just like all other types of painting, to do well or whatever, right? And I'm not trying to shit on Impressionism, but, like, when you... When you're a baby, when you're a baby at art, Impressionism is one of the easier styles to, like, really get into, because it's just, like... It's almost about getting the feeling of it, and it's okay if your strokes are not as, you know, considered, and your colors right. are a little bit, you know, <laughs> there's not a lot of, you know, defined color work in this fucking thing, right? So, I know most of the, if I went back and looked at, like, paintings I did in, like, when I was, like, fucking 13 in school and shit, they would probably be mostly look impressionist, I bet. 
I don't know how, how on purpose it was, but uh, uh, little I mean, to none. Sure. I'd say probably abstract. <laughs> eh, yeah, well, I don't know. The one I was that I always remember as being kind of, okay, God, I don't know where it's at. If I ever find it, I'll find an excuse to put it in a video for some reason, just because why the fuck not. But uh, it's like a, it's like a, it was from a Nat Geo magazine. It was like a two page spread of like this purple and, and red and like red orange and purple orange, like. It, it was a, like a volcano, like not erupting, but you know, there's some activity smoke. going on. So, yeah, so it's like billowing this red purple smoke and like just a lot of like dark, warm colors, lots of purple and shit. Very, uh, I forget the term, but uh, like you know, mount you know the word malpace in Spanish. No, it like it's used in like Mexico and the American Southwest to talk about like. Like craggy volcanic areas with like dark colored like igneous rock and shit, but uh, yeah, it's kind of like that type of vibe. But I don't know where it's at. But uh, if 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 there was any, I didn't uh, try to do anything. But if there was any style that it ended up being, it was fucking impressionism, probably because I was a baby and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Basically, is my point. I guess. So what, what was the contemporary style in Paris at the time? Let's see. That everybody's shitty about Impressionists. What's the difference between Impressionism and Realism? Well, Realism is, like, realistic. The attempt is to be realistic. I thought that was what Impressionism was, too. No. I think I have a mi- complete misunderstanding of what Impressionism is. Look through some of these Impressionist paintings. Right, I'm kind of looking at them here. Right, I mean... It just seems like it depends on who the artist is. Well, of course, but... Some of these look like realism to me. The... Let me open this one. The Luncheon on the Grass by Edouard... Manet, I'm saying that wrong, I'm sure, but like all these art terms and artists in the last video or two that we did. But this one, this feel, this hardly looks like Impressionism to me, but I, let's see. Oh, But you can see some of these other ones like. Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. I, I found it under techniques. Yeah, well, like another Monet too. Woman with a Parasol. Madame Monet and her son, like, it's incredibly detailed, but also, like, you can see how. Honestly, I think I like this better than, uh, like, realism. Yeah. It's softer. Yeah. Well, I like it. it, Like, they were talking about the passage of time. You sort of get the the way the clouds are done. It's very, like, you can see how loose it is, but it. There's more like a sensational and else that the like the subject is like wind blown or whatever, but it looks windy. Right. Okay. So I keep seeing when I keep looking at uh, impressionist artists, they keep showing Van Gogh works, but Van Gogh is not an impressionist. He's a post impressionist. <laughs> Obviously. I don't know what that means. Okay, so he did do some Impressionism, I guess. Neo-Impressionism? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I hate I hate all these stupid, like, art terms. Art genres? I hate genres in general. Because <laughs> they get... It's wankery. There's definitely elements of wankery, for sure. Elements, my ass. It's uh, all wankery. I mean... Uh, I'm not a genre defender, right? Uh huh. You know, I we've had this conversation before, but like, it's they serve a purpose in terms of like helping to like trace the lineages of styles and like, oh, I like something like this impressionism. Oh, look, I like more things that are also impressionism, right? I guess. Like that is the function of a genre, right? Right. Like I want to listen to some rap music. You know what I mean? Right. But the, but the fact that something is rap music doesn't like indicate everything about it, right? 
You know what I mean? Right. But I under, I mean, yes, I agree. There is, it, it often devolves into wankery. I mean, you know how, how music can be as much as anything else. Fucking, fucking post pre metal bluegrass. Metal. Yeah. Yeah. Like the the pro the the main distillation of the problem is like metal. There's just too much forms of metal. When most of it is just like three bands. Right. Each different genre of metal is like two or three dudes. <laughs> yeah, it... yeah. It's rough. Well it's an it's an like you know, you want the if you call something an impressionist painting, you want it to be useful in terms of helping categorize broadly a certain style and, you know, things that are similar. And like I said, like tracing lineage, right? Impressionism right. was a reaction to this and it used right. elements of this. That's when it's useful. But when it's like, oh, that's an impressionist painting. Well, this, this, and this aren't how, right. I, how you know, you don't want to use it like well, here's the prescriptively. Issue. Well, here's the issue, yeah. Yeah. right, is... The the problem where we're in, we're running into here is we're thinking of art as being like we go from this to this to this when you have stuff that ran here and then they like overlap. So if an artist was active like like Van Gogh, he was alive from eighteen fifty three to eighteen ninety. Mm-hmm. Under the periods listed, realism, post impressionism, modern art, impressionism, Japan. Japanisme, cloisonism, pointillism, neo impressionalism. <laughs> like you know, all these things are like blocked together into like one giant subsect, and it's it's impossible. Like, define to me Japanisme. I've never heard that term in my life. Yeah. So I can't. But basically, the in in essence, you want your genres to be descriptive, not prescriptive. Right. Oh, okay. But I like Claude Monet. Yes. <laughs> Basically, I like Vincent Van Gogh. Have you ever seen that? What's that? Uh, man, we should if do you like... Want, if you want to talk about Van Gogh, I'll talk about Van Gogh. We can but... talk about Van Gogh some for sure. I mean, I don't know what else we're going to talk about. Besides, I wanted to say, uh, you know that Van Gogh documentary? That's like all it's made like in... Fuck you. Do not bring that up to me because I talk to you about that every time we bring up Van Gogh. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, hey, did you hear about that movie about Van Gogh's life that's literally all yeah, paintings, exactly. uh, like, that's, every sh- shot is a, it's like stop motion paintings. Yes. Yes. Every frame is painted in the style. Incredibly of, based. I was going to say yes. we should find an excuse to talk about it. Yes. Right now. Well, yeah, but maybe even more than that because it's so fucking based. It is. There's a There's a Beastie Boys music video that's done the exact same way and it's like Van Gogh-esque. I should, I'll right. send it to you. It's uh, Shatrak is the song, if somebody wants to look it up. But I'll send it to you if I remember. But uh, yeah, incredibly based. Yes. Yeah, Van Gogh is my favorite artist of like any... Uh, ever. Like every one of Van Gogh's paintings is just in, like, incredible to me. Even like the more muted and dark colored ones, like the potato eaters and stuff, those are all like incredibly based. Everyone talk. Everyone talks about like Starry Night and shit, which don't get me wrong, is top tier. But I mean, like the the one that's the oh god, the street. There we go. And it, the one of my favorites is his. Uh, oh yeah, Cafe Terrace at Night. That one's like one of my favorites. But his self portrait. And the straw hats one of my and the sunflowers. The sunflowers is definitely top tier too. It's one of my favorites. I agree with these uh, everything you just said. I know. Uh, whatever this is, this fox. We're gonna open this here. James Abbott McNeil is the artist. Okay. Uh, James Abbott McNeil Whistler is the full is his full name, I guess. Uh, Nocturne in Black and Gold, The Falling Rocket. Whoa! I'm a fan of this. Yeah, this. <laughs> we need to just get like a green thing. Put it up. Yeah, we might as well. I told you we should just paint this wall green. 
We need Plus, that. it'd be kind of fun. Yeah. How do green screens work? I don't know. I really don't. Me neither. I have no idea. Hmm, what's this? I don't know, but I kind of like it. After the Bath Woman Drying Herself. By Edgar Degas. Yes. Hmm. I like that. What is that? Is it charcoal? Or is that painting? Let's see. Uh, it doesn't say. Hmm. Does it have its own page? No. Oh, pastel on wove paper. Oh. Cool. Thanks, Wikipedia. Right? Oh. Uh. I like this one. Yeah, I've seen this before. Yeah. It's kind of a famous one. Yeah. I like its use of perspective with the, the building going yeah. in the different directions and the yes. Yeah. Yeah. It almost honestly this this almost looks like it's alive. Yes. Yes. Uh if this is impressionism, then I can see where the confusion comes in with realism because that just looks yeah, realistic. That's what I'm saying. That's where I get kind of confused. I'll, we'll, we'll put I mean, that just doesn't feel... I mean... It's called Paris Street, Rainy Day. I got... Uh, Claude Monet. Right. The Cliff at uh, Etretat Etre After the Storm, 1885. Oh. I like it. This looks like a... Well, here's another, here's another one that's, like, super realistic and interesting to look at. Yeah. It's called The Floor Scrapers. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of... Kind of digging, uh... Gustav Kellebot. Dude's kind of base. You folks. There's another nice one. I mean, it's not as, like, realistic. But I, I like that he kind of get the motion in the water and everything with the, the brush strokes. Yeah, see, this one feels a lot more, like, of the that same is, style. Right. Yeah. What's that one called? Uh, Summertime by Mary Cassé. Yeah. Or cool. Cassatt. I don't know. Oh, I think it's Cassatt because she's born in America. This doesn't even have Van Gogh on the fucking page. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, they call him an impressionist artist. I don't know. Come here, Wikipedia. Oh. Yeah, look at this one. Hmm. I like how this video is just an excuse to look at good art. Yeah, literally. I think that's what we said in one of the other ones. It's like, it's just an excuse for... Okay, this looks like something I made in, like, Sunday school. The fuck? It looks like I a fucking... I think this is Joseph Smith. It looks like a fucking... <laughs> no, it looks like a fucking <laughs> painting on the wall in, like, The Simpsons. I know. <laughs> I'm, sa- I'm Just what I say, this looks like some shit I made. Uh, Le Christ Jean, uh, or The Yellow Christ, by Paul Gauguin. Gauguin? Oh, he also made the Green Christ. Okay, I like the, I I kind of I kind of dig this one. You know, it's kind of hard to. Yeah. It's kind of hard to like understand what's going on. Yes. But, I mean, that's it's probably what he was going for. Yeah. Okay. All right. Look at this. This is like somber as fuck. Yeah, what's the name of that? Uh, so I remember to put it in the video because it's really good. Uh, Summer Night by Winslow Homer. Okay, so so we might as well just talk about post-impressionism too because fuck it, right? Yes. Because uh, that's what the main category they put Van Gogh under. Hmm. Titty. Whoa. I'm guessing you didn't... You... Whoa! I really like this one. I like all the colors and everything in it. Yeah. At first I thought this was like a reflection. Yeah. Which I don't... Yeah. No, it's not. We need the name of that one, too. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing you didn't watch the uh, the Renaissance the, video back. 
bar at Foley's Bear Jerk. No, I did not. Why was I supposed to? No, uh, you don't have to, but when whenever there was titties, I put little Raphael heads over the... That's funny. Over the titties. That's funny. Um, you didn't tell me to watch it, so I... That's, uh, that's alright. Because uh, I kind of remember what happened in it, so... I fucking... Well, what happens is I edit them weeks in advance, and then I forget. I'll be editing, right. and I'm like, this is funny, Eric, like this. And then it's like, alright, and then I don't think about it. I, mean, I usually I'll, don't. I usually I'll don't, go back and rewatch it. I guess I usually don't think about these. Like we'll do them, and then it'll be like Tuesday night at a, at like eleven thirty. Oh 30. yeah, okay. Here, literally, here is the most famous like impressionist painting ever. Yeah, <laughs> she got the cake. Anyway, post impressionism, uh, roughly between eighteen eighty six and nineteen oh five, and uh, the main. Th- the main thing is that it is uh, intentionally like less realistic than Impressionism was. Gotcha. They continued using visit, vivid colors, thick application of paint, and real-life subject matter, but were more inclined to emphasize ge- geometric forms, distort form for expressive effect, and use unnatural or arbitrary color. Let's look at some, some post-Impressionist art here. All right. Okay. This one is the artist is Odilon Redon. Zy- Zyclop and Ang- Agoria. Anyway, I like it regardless. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Looks like an album cover. Yeah, it's fantastical. Yes. Fuck vivid colors. All the homies like dark colors. Yeah. You know, I like that. This is, oh god, Felix Vallotton. I'm sorry, 1865 to 1925. Oh my god, I need English. I'll go back up. I'm ignorant. Here's the here's the name right here. Uh, the mistress and the servant. <laughs> yes, <laughs> roughly <laughs> in English. Okay, right. See, this is like, this makes, if you say this is post-expressionist, I mean post-impressionist compared to some of the ones we were showing before that are more realistic, I get it, right? Because it's like even more abstracted, but it has the same kind of, like elements of movement, movement, but also like very strong colors. Yes, but are you going to argue with me that wheat field with crows is not like the most base fucking thing you've ever seen in your life? Based? Yes. Incredibly so. I would buy that. We feel buy it. I'm sure you can. I'm sure I can too. Well, not the original, probably. No. I mean, at this point, you might as well just print it on canvas yourself, because fuck it. Right. It's not like Van Gogh's getting any money. <laughs> he wasn't getting any money back then either. I know, but... Van Gogh was one of those sad state, like, sad instances where, like, he died around the time he was getting, like, popular. Yeah. That's why it's unfortunate. I know. Yo! That's, like, cool as fuck. By Edouard Villard. The self-portrait with Varroque. It looks like a stand. Yo, that's what it looks <laughs> like. It looks like a stand. Punch goes peeking out. Saved it real quick. Save that shit right now. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Moulin Rouge. Uh, so this one's poster. Maurice Maurice Dennis Denise whatever. Uh, I like how like uh, the closer the the subject is to the bottom, the more detailed they are, and the further the way they kind of yeah. melt. Yes. It's very interesting. And the title is Wave. Oh. Or Onde in French. But, uh, yeah, this is good. Like, this this is another post-impressionist that, like, I guess you can, they said something about the, like, the messing with geometric forms and shit. Right. You can see how it doesn't really look, it starts to look less realistic, like, in, ter- in that sense, but then 
in terms of like the way the colors work and like you said the perspective and shit it, it's more detailed up at the front right so it's like a blending of some elements of like realistic art techniques and then deliberately like fucking with geometry and shit right i think post-impressionism might be better than regular impressionism i don't know maybe they're both based yo the scream can't forget the scream the scream can't forget it uh Art got good in 1880? Question mark? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> this is Paul Signac. Yo, I like this one. Uh, the Large Bathers by Paul Kazan. Opus 217, against the enamel of a background rhythmic with beats and angles, tones and tints. Portrait of Mr. Felix F- uh, Fenion Fene- in 1890. This looks like if, uh, like, Tom Waits and the Beatles made a crossover album, this would be, like, the cover of it. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> oh, you can't... Oh, the, yeah. The Dream by Henry Rousseau. Quite like that. This looks like it inspired, a. Uh... Disney, the the forest scenes in Disney's version of Alice in Wonderland, potentially. Or there's similarities anyway, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a relatively famous painting. I've seen it before. I'm into it. I like it. Yeah. All right, so what's neo-impressionism? Probably just that, but now. I don't oh, know. I know. No. Okay, I have seen that painting as qualified as Neo and Post and Impressionism. I'm confused. I just don't understand. Neo, so Neo Impressionism was just like, uh, it was like a thing for two years. It was like a bunch of anarchists making some art. For two years. It's not really its own thing. Oh. It's just like a handful of people. Oh, so a lot of these... Ones that are more... A little bit more abstracted and like... You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Are considered neo-impressionism. There's Charles Angrand... George Lemon, The Beach at Heist. I'm not going to go through a bunch of them, but just to throw a couple up there. Oh, I like that. It's just called uh, Fog Visions. Hmm. So, oh, okay, I kind of get it. Alfred Sisley. Yeah, I kind of get it. I understand it. So, wait, that's, exp- that's expressionism. And Impressionism? I'm confused. So, Expressionism... Expressionism comes... It sort of comes out of Impressionism. It's even more, like, abstracted. It's literally just like... Alright, so now we've got... Impressionism started off like... There was an element of realism to it. Then the post-Impressionists were like... Alright, let's abstract it. And then... uh, Expressionism was purely like, fuck it. This shit's this shit's one hundred percent subjective. Uh, when it when I think about the scream, this is how I feel. The fucking sky's wavy and shit. Right. Expressionism developed as an avant garde style before the First World War. There was expressionist architecture, painting, literature, theater, dance, film, and music. You know where I think I recognize a bunch of these from? What? My doctor and dentist's office is... <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. This is what a bunch of these look like. Just saying. Uh, Yo, what the fuck is that? Ernst Ludwig Kirchner's Self-Portrait as a Soldier. This is an expressionist painting here. Oh. just want to open it so we can take a gander here. You see, we've reached we've le- reached levels of abstraction that shouldn't even be possible. But here we are. 
with one hand, weird deformed face. Everything in the background is a slurry of colors and walls. Uh, it's based. Yeah. It's fucking bizarre. A little bit, yeah. I'm into it. Yeah. But uh, here's one more. Here's one more expressionist. Franz Mark fighting forms. We've we've lit now. We've reached levels of abstraction that shouldn't even be popular. Two blobs of color fighting? Question mark. This this is why they say artists are like. <laughs> this is why the church used to imprison artists. Well, they were imprisoning them long before this shit. Well, this is these are these are these satanic satanic images are coming out of my mind. Right. I mean, I guess I get it. They, the the viewer's mind is supposed to interpret what's going on, but yeah, I mean, it's just it's kind of pretty to look at for a minute. I'm not trying to decipher it. You know what I mean? Why not? Is that what you're supposed to do with art? Is interpret it? Understand it? Well, I don't know about that. Interpret it, maybe. Understand. Don't you interpret something to understand it? Well, yeah, but do you mean understand as, like, what did he mean when he painted this? Because I don't give a shit about that. No, I want to learn the understanding of what it means to me. Well, then, you don't need any outside help. May I, You don't need any outside help. I, when did I say anything about well, outside no, help? Just, I mean, you could just interpret it, then. I, know. I don't know. I can't put it into words. Look at it. He couldn't put it into words either. He painted a bunch of fucking swirly colors. How do you know? Maybe he painted something. You're just interpreting it as a bunch of swirly colors. Well, I know. Exactly. That's that's my interpretation. Because <laughs> you're too right-brained, bro. You're too right-brained. Is that right? Yeah. That's why you're left-handed. <laughs> I can't argue with that. Wait, I think I got that mixed up. I mean, you said right and left, whatever. No, I think... I think your left brain is supposed to be more logical and uh, rational. And your right brain is supposed to be like the creative side of your brain or something. I don't... It's. I think that's like like, phrenological bullshit. Yeah. We gotta gotta put phrenology in the hat. Why? (laughs) Because it's fucking... It's just funny. <laughs> I mean, I guess. How much... Uh, fuck actual topics. We're just gonna put pseudoscience. Old pseudoscience into the fucking hat. Fuck it, why not? <laughs> Was Freud a fraud? Yes. Master debating? Yes. Based or cringe, Freud? Anyway, impressionism. I thought he yeah. was in the hat. Freud? Yeah. I don't, we don't have very... We don't really have any... We have. I think we have Young in there. But besides that, we don't really have any psychologists. And Carl Jung's pretty out there for a psychologist. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think Freud was a little out there for Freud a psychologist. Freud was out there, too, but Freud was more focused on, like... Freud... Let's see, we're about to get into Freud, but for two minutes. For, like, not even two minutes. The fucking ten-second version. Freud was more interested in, like, actual... He was he tried to categorize actual human behaviors, whereas Carl Jung really tried to, like have some, like, deep understanding about, like, human nature and shit. So he he leans way more to, like, philosophizing than Freud did, you know oh, what I mean? gotcha. Yeah. When you get into the collective unconscious and people are attaching themselves real... to archetypes and shadows and it's like... He's some know, real Plato-type shit. More than Freud, yeah. Gotcha. They're, they're Plato and, like, Socrates or whatever, right? I guess. Yeah. There's a sticker on the bottom of my cup. Anyway... Uh, Art's cool. We'll look at it next time on Master Debating.